to White Line Fever Live and you know what those uh, people on YouTube do. They point at the bottom of the screen and they say like and subscribe. Now, when I see a, a Canadian journalist interviewing the hoodoo gurus or the angels or Rose Tattoo, I kind of like, I'm a bit dismissive because I'm like, you didn't grow up with this stuff. You don't know what you're talking about. And now I'm in the absolute opposite position. And my, and my Canadian viewers are going to be hypercritical of my questions and my knowledge, but we will press on. I will do my best. From Honeymoon Suite, Johnny D. How are you, Johnny? I'm fine, Steve. That was a great uh, introduction. And you'll be just fine. Canadians will <laughs> love you. Believe me. I'll bluff. I'll bluff. I'll bluff my way through. But uh, it's great to have you after all these years. I told you off air uh, that I you know, had... Um, you know, the album in 1988 and I, I, and the Love Changes Everything was one of my favourite songs. And I was on that Monsters of Rock cruise when you played. No, I wasn't. I missed you by a year, I think. So I, still one day, I hope to I hope to see the band live. But speaking of live, that is the name of the new record, but it's not a live record. It's it's called Alive. And exactly. So, <laughs> and I just, I thought it'd be an e easy place to start. And also a, a question that didn't require a lot of in-depth knowledge, I guess, uh, uh, is, <laughs> is, is the... Um, um, is the title because is it, is it you saying we're still alive as a band? Are you saying that uh, we're still alive as individuals? I know there's a song on there called "Living Out Loud," which I think is about making the most of your life. Uh, exactly. So, what what was the thinking with with the title and what's it trying to tell? Alive. Uh, it's just it's it's a it's it, first of all it's an inspirational song. Um, got a lot of noise in my head. Don't lose control. I mean, the world's going crazy. Um, and you got to hang on to something and this person or something, you know, I want to feel alive. So there's nothing that you can say or nothing that you can do that will not make me feel differently. Um, so it's just everything about that track alive is not saying telling people that we're alive as a band. It's you can call it a relationship sort of song, but just something very inspirational. I think that music today, uh, just for me. Uh, we wanted to write, write a record that was, I keep using that word inspirational, just something that gets you up, you know, yeah. um, it can, it could be, it could be a girl, it could be your, it could be your little dog or cat, whatever, just something, you know, say something, I want to hold on to it, you know, to make me feel alive. Yeah. yeah. And it's been, it's been a fairly long time coming It sort of started the gestation of the record started pre COVID from what I, right. I've read and some singles have already been released. Right. The, 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 the the imperative to put out albums. I know it's a common question now that people ask sort of older musicians, older pe older journalists ask older musicians about, right. you know, like, why do you feel that compunction that to, that you need, that you, you, you've got to I put just, out albums? Well, we, we do well as a band. Like in Canada, we do very well. We're starting to do very well in the US. And, and people come out and um, I don't want to keep going on there, living on the successes of the last records. And uh, yeah, they say, you guys don't need to do a new record. You'll be fine. And it's like, we got we got songs and we're always writing. We've put a few records out that were independent that didn't go anywhere, but we've remained current. It's just something that, you know, Derry and I, you know, Dave Betts, Gary Lalonde, Peter Nunn say, well, we want to write, even though um, we're not playing the we from the independent records. We're really not playing that stuff live, but we did put out new stuff. And it, if it does well, we'll add um, we'll add them into our set. But let me go back to what you first started. Um, this record took a little while. We started working with our producer, whose name is Mike Crumpus. We started in Tennessee. Um, and uh yeah and then we're flying back and forth and we first started working with him and it's like we got something here but then he moved to the uk and it's like then COVID hit I hate to mention it but <laughs> it was hard to fly you know it was mm. it just getting really really difficult we're working on like no budget right and uh but we had these songs and we knew that were good and um that's just about pretty much in the nutshell and i just want to add it like this you couldn't fly and now we got to start I have to vocals to finish and I have to like start sending files and stuff like vocal files. And it's so hard to do like online. And there's, there's not like the old days you'd be sitting in the same venue or studio for like two months. We're all together, but we're so spread out. So it took a little bit of time. One last thing before I end this is, yeah, I want to let everybody know that we had a new record 
Uh, so we, our first um, thing that we really, first song that we released was a song called Tell Me What You Want, a girly song. It's like, hey, make up your mind, girl, that kind of thing. And uh, here in Canada, it, it like it charted, right? Mm. And it just let everybody know that the band is still current, right? And uh, we're putting out new stuff. And uh, that's all we can do is put out new stuff and hope for the best. Now, a lot of bands that, um, you know, we were into at the time who from outside America, let's use an example of DAD from Denmark or Angel City from Australia or all these sort of bands. They they had their time in America, they had their shot, and then they're able to go back to their domestic markets and earn a living now. If you go see DAD in Denmark, they're playing big theatres. If you go and see the Angels, they're playing, you know, theatres, big clubs or whatever. Now, can you give people who don't spend a lot of time in Canada an idea of how ubiquitous honeymoon suite are there how much a part of the culture you are how often you hear your own music and and sit and hear people make reference to the band and the, and the lyrics and all that sort well, of stuff well it's just constant for us we do very well in canada but you know like re rehearsing is uh, like if i want to go through the tracks <laughs> i just hop <laughs> my truck and it's being played on the radio i mean there's all this classic rock sort of stuff um, but let me say this, like for those bands who like made it big in the U.S. and all that sort of stuff and things just kind of dwindled away, um, he, there was a time where we were playing the big venues, the big stadiums, and then like a band like Honey, Honeymoon Suite is a melodic rock band. And at one point, I think it was, I don't know, late nine, uh, early 90s, mm -hmm. where our kind of music was like, uh, you know, it just wasn't happening. It was like this whole new music where... Uh, it was different, you know, mm -hmm. like singers are screaming and whatever, you know, pissed off at the world. And uh, our kind of music just got put on the wayside. Now, um, like in 2024, at least it's coming, they're, they're coming back to songs. I mean, not everybody likes like melodic rock and stuff like they're going to like our band, but this is what we do. And let mm -hmm. just let me say this. Yeah. So we, we were doing the big stuff. And then we ended up doing the small stuff, which was really, really cool too. The small venues, which are a lot of freaking fun to have somebody like right in your face, you know, that kind of thing. You're shaking that person's hand while you're singing a song. Can't do that in the stadium. You know, half the first four or five rows are all VIPs with their suits on sitting there, you know, like looking at you. And it's like, you know, no. Nah. Anyways, I've broken down many a barricade just to get those people out of my way. Welcome back to uh, our interview with uh, with Johnny here from Honeymoon Suite. I want to thank him for his time. Uh, in the last part of the interview, uh, he talked a little bit about, I guess, the onset of grunge and the impact that had, and also the um, uh, re-emergence of, of, of melodic rock. And I had some questions about that written down already. A lot of people had um, nightmare stories uh, about uh, when grunge hit, about not, not being able to get arrested. You know, like like and everyone <laughs> everyone associated with them. If you were a lighting technician with a with a, a you know a, 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 a traditional hard rock band, you couldn't get a gig anymore. Like totally being black, a giant blacklist with thousands of names on it. Did, was it was it that dramatic for you when when um, grunge hit? It was different, but the good thing about Honeymoon Suite is that we have a loyal, we have we had fans, loyal mm -hmm. fans. Maybe a lot of them didn't come out, but we went out there and played and played mm -hmm. in front of them and we kept it going. But let me just say something about this new music, well, this music that was coming out. Um, if you want to call it grunge or whatever. Mm -hmm. In that sort of era, when those that music, there were some great songs there too mm -hmm. that remain today. Like some Nirvana songs, like they're getting played all the time, and and it's great. And you know, Dave Grohl, jeez, you know that's really really good stuff. So some music, which I'd like to say, the good songs, you can hear them today. So there's so there's a good a lot of good that came out of that. Mm, yeah, yeah. And and when did you first become aware or get a feeling that melodic rock was coming back? And and it is evolve. It isn't. It isn't static, is it? It's kind of evolving in an interesting way. If you go to some of those festivals over here and in Scandinavia, particularly, melodic rock is still an evolving art form in that part of the world. Yeah. It's, it doesn't sound the same as what you did in 1988, does it? it it's, no, it's we're, we're doing things a little bit differently musically, but yeah. not intentionally. It's just yeah. we've grown as writers and all that sort of stuff. Um. And what can I say? You know, it's all good. And we just appreciate the, what's what's going on. Is it is? Mm. Yeah. OK, so it's coming back. Um, you know, who knows what's going to happen 10 years from now, what the music's going to be um, right now. Classic rock is great. 
um, there's classic rock stations and all that sort of stuff, just playing classic rock. But we got something new. We're hoping that, um, you know, these it might turn around a little bit where they'll anybody who's writing something new, if it does something, that they'll play it on the radio. I mean, it's a, it's a toughie. But I'll tell you this, <laughs> don't think I'm a, a jerk for saying this, but if I if they're asking me to go to a radio station or something like that, I'm going to bring my little zip fly or whatever. And mm. You want me there? Here, you play a new track and I'll, I'll talk to you <laughs> all you want, all afternoon, you know? Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. Then they'll say, hang on, Steve. Then they'll say, you can't do that. It's not part of our format. Well, then I'm not part of your format because this is something new. We can't... can't keep playing new girl now and feel it again and love changes and all that sort of stuff over and over again you know a band's got something to say please give it a listen then even if you only play it once it's fine with me yeah do, do you feel that, that you might be able to go to places that you didn't go the first time around because the scene is is different and i know we talked about australia before before we started recording oh uh, we just have to get there um mm -hmm. there is talk about uh, doing a uk uh, European tour and then like coming up and I said can we please wait till this record does to see what it does so that maybe we can play some of these new songs you know live not mm. not all live but you know <laughs> live so yeah things are changing it's bringing us into new venues especially in America Australia definitely want to get to you know our records being released in, J in Japan and as a matter of fact I'll tell you this we we went to where Tokyo I believe and representing Canada, and we played this song, and it won the World Popular Song Festival. It was like really cool stuff that happened. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, cool. And how are you finding um, with your voice? Has has it changed much over the years, or is it is it is it pretty constant? It's pretty constant. You can hear it on the record. I think it's, yeah. I take very good care of it. I warm up the moment my eyes open up open up in the morning. I mean, that's what you do. You, know, you don't eat before you play. And uh, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of junk that you can put in your system. But we're a very, you know, I'm pretty proud to say we're a very clean band. So everything's really cool. Um, yeah, everything's like so far really good. And just let me end it like this. Every year, got to go to the doctor and get nodes, you know, get checked for pops, nodes in your throat. Anyways, I just went like a couple of weeks ago. It comes out this big, long can tube puts it up your nose and it goes all the way back and then it takes like about 45 seconds to him you know you're just waiting he pulls it out doesn't say anything then he goes you're clear and it's like yeah you know because that's that's the you know it's the worst thing that can happen to any singer but so far so good and i'm there uh, yeah i'm knocking on wood right now so yeah, that's 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 uh, that that John Bon Jovi just had the surgery, didn't he? So he's uh, been going through the, the wars. Oh, I didn't know that. I feel yeah. bad. Well, he, uh, yeah, he well he sang last again last week, so he's uh, it, it seems to have been successful. But uh, yeah, the oh. last the last tour, everyone thought he was struggling with his voice, and it turns oh. out it wasn't age. It wasn't age. It was actually like a you know. Well, the, all the best to him. I mean, like he's he's done a lot of work, and we're close to Bon Jovi. I mean, he, we had the same producer. After we had uh, Bruce Fairburn which yep. did the big prize record. And next yep. thing you know, Bruce Fairburn does, goes ahead and does uh, Bon Jovi, then Metallica, you know, then it just went on the list. And here we are, Honeymoon Suite, still whatever. But anyways, yeah, all the power to him. And I'm glad that he made it through that surgery because that is huge. And that's really evasive. Like, it, you know, luckily he got through it. So that's good. <laughs> Welcome back. Third and final part of our interview with uh, Johnny from Honeymoon Suite. Really want to thank him for his time. Now, I oh. found this I found this interesting that we're talking to young bands, I was talking to a band called uh, The Cruel Intentions the other day, and they were in um, uh, Peacemaker, the TV show, and, and they're saying how much it did for their career, uh, right. how, how, their, how their streams went up. But you guys, like, you know, like, I mean, with Miami Vice and... and yeah. uh, and and uh, lethal weapon. I mean, like, it was such a huge thing in your career, wasn't it? Like, oh like, well, that that's that's Warner Brothers Los Angeles. That yeah. was like Warner Brothers, and it's like we were there. Just let me tell you about lethal weapon. We were working with uh, Ted Templeman, or he's Van Halen's what Van Halen's producer. Anyways, yeah. sent me this song uh, written by Michael Kamen. I had left the studio just to get out of the studio because I it's so boring for me. And he sent it to me over the phone and played me this lethal weapon thing and uh uh he goes johnny can you 
can you sing this track? And I go, Ted, this is not, for, this is not honeymoon suite. He goes, Johnny, please, whatever you do, just make it your own, do whatever you did. I, I got back to the studio in LA and I got behind the microphone, didn't listen to anybody. I sang it the way I wanted and bang, it got into that lethal, the first lethal weapon. Mm. It was in late. So you only hear it when the credits come down. Right. And it's like, mm. okay, where's the, where's the song you know but anyways yeah miami vice was really cool they had bad attitude in it and all that right um yeah it's really good demi moore with uh, one crazy summer i believe was what does it take so yeah it's great but you know what can i just say this to you like a, a lot of the honeymoon suite stuff is kind of like movie oriented you know it's mm -hmm. it, it fits you know there's some heavy songs maybe not so heavy songs but it's just great that you can watch a program and there are your songs in it well, especially miami vice i mean that was a cool program yeah yeah I, this is a really weird question and you, you might be able to make fun of me for asking this question but huh? oh, well. when i when i hear those songs those aor leaning hard rock songs right. from from the 80s and that i think of school dances and and all that sort of stuff but you know, be, drinking illegally, you know, being too young to drink and still going to the pub. And, 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 and when your hormones are racing, you know, that is, I guess the, today's kids, they're going to think of Taylor Swift when they're our age, you know, when they, well, okay. when, 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 when they think of that time of their, uh, that time of their uh, lives. I just wonder how hard is it to write and capture that spirit when you're no longer that age, when you're so far separated from that lifestyle and that, that youth you know that puberty yeah you know, well, how, do, do, how is it hard to write and recapture that spirit you, or does it just come naturally it's just done naturally i mean nobody's going to tell me how to sing but you have to think young sing young and look as young as you can i mean like like take care of yourself the best you can uh i think the question is quite funny but you know you write the songs that mean something to you. And I, I, any listener out there listening to a singer, I, I think the listener knows when it's for real or when it's not. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, some of the most, a lot of the lyrics are written by Derry, but we're so uh, he's, we're so much alike that I can change a few things around, but I make them my own, which makes it for me, I can only say this, that when I'm listening to myself, I believe myself. And I think yeah. that's really important to the listener. Yeah, because I think like those younger bands now who are doing Motley Crue type music, I just wonder if they have the same emotions, you know, when they when they write and when they hear it as we did back then, because back then it was right. mainstream and to them now it's quite a, it, it's not, it's a niche thing now. So I just wonder if it, if they feel the same when they, when they hear the songs and when they when they write them. And just, uh, anyway, we'll never know. We'll never know. But yeah, um, well, that's a good one. We'll never know. That's a good title. <laughs> <laughs> um, LA wasn't all kind to you, was it? Uh, no. You, you've had a bad no, experience? It was. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the word is. Black. That's all I can think of. Black. To get, I got hit by a car at the airport. And I don't know what the, what the hell happened. I was laying on the ground and it was just black. Everything mm -hmm. was black. Next thing I know, I open up my eyes and there's some uh, U.S. cop with a baton in his hand yelling at some girl saying, you just hit this guy. Anyways, oh, I was down on the ground. I, you know, I, th this car hit me and I ended up on the, on the windshield breaking it. I looked over. Anyways, I came to, it seemed fine. And I knew that I had a photo shoot like the next day, like or the next couple of days, I had to go to New York. And uh, I asked the officer, I go, okay, okay, I know he's looking at me. And I go, is my face okay? Because I got to take pictures in a couple for the Racing After Midnight record, I believe. He goes, uh, uh, sir, your face is okay, but your leg is not. And I just looked and my, my leg was going left, right, every every which way you asked so i'm just having to tell you they pick me up and I, they pick me up and i finally get me in an ambulance i'm just oh there's something that happens in your body when you when you're in, in, in excruciating it's pain it's like some enzymes come out so i didn't feel anything until i got to the first um first hospital and they're looking at my leg and whatever and they look at me they get my name like, hey, i got no insurance here Oh, okay. Anyways, bring me to another freaking place. And oh, you got no insurance here. So they're picking me up till they finally brought me to a university, right? Where they straightened out my leg. And uh, geez, you know, anyways, I remember so well, the pain is excruciating. Anyways, uh, next day I was uh, 
instead of going to to get my picture taken. I was in a hospital in in Toronto, Ontario. They got Warner Brothers got me fixed right away. A Maple Leafs uh, the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs doctor uh, was the guy who fixed me up. And anyways, that was it was sad, but I made it through. I'm alive. It's better to go uh, on top of the car uh, than underneath it. So I'm pretty happy. The whole thing with uh, traveling in the states and insurance is. Uh... Well, I'm going. I'm going next week. You've scared me, so I might have to <laughs> make sure I'm no, make sure I'm properly insured. I'm all set up now, but these are the sort of things you have to yeah. look at. And mm -hmm. now, like with credit cards, most times your credit card will have your insurances on it. But for some reason, back in those days, it just wasn't um, something that you really think about. You know, you're going to get hit by a car at the airport. No, come on. I mean, mm. anyways, I uh, made it through, finished off the record, and uh, went. You know made more records after it of course you did of course you did the many great records uh last question your experiences with frontiers uh you've been you from what i see you've been surprised like very happy uh you, you know you, yeah. You, yeah yeah well, well well martina's basically been so great to me like my she's we're italy is what five or seven hour difference i'm, I'm not sure is it well, you're five. I'm five. So, yeah, they're another five. couple. Yeah, I think, yeah. Okay, so it's seven. But they've been great. And it's like you never know who to sign with or who not. But they just, there was something about them that had the interest in this record, right? Mm. And, um, like, I've been, like, yourself, and I thank you so much for the time that you're giving me to, you know, speak out. But thank you for taking this time. But they set it up for you and I to speak. So um, it, it's great. 